We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. It's well known that narcissists like to maintain control over you via the, uh, the use of gaslighting. And when we talk about gaslighting, we refer to them keeping you confused about the status or the nature of the relationship and your interpretations, etc. One of the favorite techniques that narcissists can use as they gaslight is the technique of breadcrumbing. Now, when we talk about breadcrumbing, we talk about them stringing you along. Uh, they'll give you just enough evidence that they're into you, but then there are many other kind of episodes that imply the exact opposite. Now, how many times have you thought to yourself, well, that narcissistic person sometimes seems to be on with you. Then later on, it's, uh, it's like, well, they're very cold and they're very off, you know, hot versus cold. Sometimes they seem to be into you and they seem really interested and want to spend time with you. And then other times it's like you barely even exist. Uh, sometimes they can be very respectful. And then other times it's like the disrespect just comes gushing out. All of these are indicators that they don't really see you as a true relationship. You're an asset that can be pulled off the shelf and used whenever they feel the need to use you. And then when they don't, they put you back on the shelf. And, and basically, uh, they'll keep you strung along by giving you uh, morsels of goodness and decency here and there when they've blown it or when they've done some things that are a little over the edge and they know they've kind of uh, showed themselves being a little bit too overbearing. They can back up and then try to be friendly and all, but it's all part of their consistent inconsistency. Um, basically, when the, when a narcissist goes into this breadcrumbing gaslighting, you'll need to just acknowledge to yourself, I'm being played, just plain and simple. It's like the narcissist is saying, when I need you, then I'll let you think that I'm on your side. But then when I don't need you, here comes all the narcissistic characteristics of control and entitlement and selfishness and defensiveness and just going their own way with their own reality. And uh, it's like you're dealing with a Jekyll and Hyde kind of situations. Now, I want to give you several indicators that says you're probably being breadcrumbed by uh, this individual. And that these are some traits that they typically use as part of their manner of dealing with people. Uh, now, the first one I've already kind of insinuated, uh, breadcrumbing, gaslighting narcissists are relationally inconsistent. What you see in one episode is not necessarily going to match pitch with what you're going to see down the road. And they're, they're predictable in their lack of predictability. Uh, they can make plans. They'll give you promises and then they won't follow through with them. And then once they, uh, once you, uh, are onto that and it seems as though they've, uh, they've been caught, guess what? They always have a plausible excuse. Well, I, I got so busy that I was unable to do thus and such, but we're, we're going to be okay next time. Or, um, I, I know that that disappointed you, but I've been under so much stress and strain and I've had so many projects on me. I, I hope that you can understand. And so they make all sorts of excuses. But after a while, it's like <laughs> these excuses are sounding really lame. We can just push the record button and listen to the same ones over and over. Uh, they can make plans with you and then, uh, as, or seemingly, uh, show a willingness to make plans with you and then not do it. I, I remember one woman that was telling me that she had this uh, girlfriend, a friend is a loosely used term, uh, who would, uh, constantly say, Hey, we need to get together for lunch. And then this woman told me, She's been saying that for, oh, at least two years, and we haven't gotten together for lunch yet. I don't think that, that tomorrow's going to look much better, but that's part of the breadcrumbing. Hey, I'm, I'm really into you. Not really, but I'm, I'm going to let you think that I am. Uh, they are famous for ghosting you, particularly after they've had a positive experience with you. 
whether it's in uh, a personal relationship or business or friendship, but when it's like, hey, you know, we're really clicking here and we've got some synergy going, then you look around later on, it's like, where'd they go? What happened? I, I thought we were a team. I thought we were into one another. Basically, these breadcrumbing gaslighters, they like to keep their options open with respect to what their loyalties are going to be. Uh, now, if you're in a romantic relationship with them, whether it's dating or, uh, or marriage, they can show an interest in sex. And so when they're interested there, they're going to be friendly and bring you chocolates and uh, say all sorts of sweet nothings to you. And then later on, it's like, not interested. <laughs> I already got what I wanted. And I, I've known many people that will do something like that. They can be very shallow in their communication. They can be shallow in their reasoning. Uh, and you can just walk away thinking, I don't know which end is up. I, I've had many people inside of extended families, for example, that, uh, that will say, you know, th this person's been really difficult and impossible. And then later on, they're really friendly. That's the breadcrumbing. They keep dropping enough uh, pleasantness or enough positives here and there to keep you online when in fact, deep down, the level of commitment is not there at all. That's what I mean when I say the shallowness. Uh, it's uh, on a, a pleasurable or when I feel like it kind of a mode coming from that narcissist toward you. In essence, the narcissist wants, to, uh, wants you to be the dog that comes running anytime they whistle. Is that the way you want your relationship to be? Come over here. Uh, I'm, I'm ready for you now. Here's a treat. And then when they're done with you, okay, get out of here. Go to the backyard. I don't care anymore. That's how many of them can operate with, uh, can operate. Now, I want you to think, how are you going to manage when you are on to this and you realize that you're just on the receiving end of this very consistent, um, you know, off and on kind of treatment toward you? Let, see, let's keep in mind, uh, research, and this is, um, you know, a deeply, um, uh, research kind of a, uh, conclusion. Research shows that one characteristic is the, the, uh, the best indicator of a truly healthy personality, and that is conscientiousness. Healthy individuals, the non-narcissistic persons, are conscientious in the sense that they realize, well, what I do now is going to have an impl implication on you later, and I want to make sure that I have an, an internal and external consistency. There's a courtesy, there's a, a sense of anticipation of how they in, uh, engage with others, and there's a willingness that says, hey, let's, uh, let's have each other's back, we're on the same team, and let's make sure that we have a high level of coordination. That's conscientiousness, and that's something that these gaslighting, breadcrumbing narcissists don't do. So let, let, let's look at a few uh, responses that you might uh, need to come to terms with. And first is, you're going to need to stop caring so much about what kind of treatment they get. When you have this uh, this consistent inconsistency, unfortunately, uh, the message there is uh, you're you're only useful to me when I say you're useful, uh, and and I just see you as that. You're a tool, and and uh, if I'm in the position where I'm being used and gaslit like that, it's like you know what, I can't just keep holding on to my hope. And my thought that says, okay, we're going to, we're going to around the corner. It's going to be a whole lot better. I, I need to look, take a look at what the, the history tells me, which then um, uh, leads us to another thought. And that is, as you respond to this breadcrumbing narcissist, don't get, you, uh, don't allow yourself to stay stuck in wishful thinking. Look at what the facts tell you. Uh, if the facts say I'm only on that person's radar when they feel like it, then this is not much of a uh, relationship. You know, healthy relationships have that sense of commitment and loyalty and goodness through thick and thin. And uh, narcissists, uh, they don't think that way at all. It, it only, uh, you only exist uh, to do their bidding when they feel like it. And then when they don't, then you're no longer useful. Get out of here. That's how they think. That being the case, you'll need to consider yourself to be a free agent. Rather than thinking, well... I'm just going to keep running my decisions and my plans through this inconsistent person. No, I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, I have a free will and I'd like to be cooperative. I want to be somebody who's reliable and steady, 
But if this individual chooses not to reciprocate, a, a relationship is just isn't going to have any kind of strength at all if it's a one-way street. I, I, need a, I need to have that sense of give and take. And if all they are is take, 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 and their give is nothing more than a ruse, a manipulation ploy, okay, I get it, I understand, but I'm not going to let myself be used in that kind of way, which then means that you uh, determine to follow through on what your plans are, what your preferences are, with or without that narcissist coordination and cooperation, rather than just waiting for them to uh, show themselves to be ready and willing and able. Well, they show themselves to do that, maybe, kind of, sort of, vagueness, ambiguity. And it's like, nope, uh, I'm going to have more certainty than that. Ultimately, breaking away from that breadcrumbing, gaslighting narcissist comes down to one uh, huge thought within yourself, and that is, I want to maintain my self-respect. This person, by uh, being consistently uh, inconsistent and then breadcrumbing me with these little morsels, they're, they're really illustrating they don't respect me. They just think of one person, and that's themselves, and they're, they're only into their own entitled kind of thing. Okay, if that's where they are, I get it. But in self-respect, I'm going to stand firmly for myself, and I'm going to be consistent with the way that I manage my life, which means that if I have to unhook from people that are uh, disdainful, so be it. I'm going to live in my own sense of dignity. That's what I'm hoping you can stand for. Now, I hope the video such as this will uh, give you some good insight and things to think about. If you've not already subscribed, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, and we also have uh, our uh, uh, Team Healthy, that join tab. Uh, we have the uh, exclusive membership that goes along with that where we have extra bonus kind of things that we uh, offer for people that are on Team Healthy. Uh, we have online weekly uh, question and answer sessions and extra videos, things like that. Uh, if you have a need for counseling, if you want somebody that can help you sift this out, I would encourage you to find someone in your area that can uh, help you in that regard. If you don't have someone immediate to you, then we have a sponsor that can help you with online counseling. Right now, that's very popular and I've received good feedback. We have a link below uh, that can take you to that with licensed professional counselors who have experience. Uh, in addition, we have our courses, my free-to-be course uh, that is very extensive with lots of lessons about personal reflection, about getting away from the controllers in your life. We're going to have more courses come along as we as we go. We have links to my books uh, like When Pleasing You is Killing Me and other books. Uh, lots of resources there. You know, the gaslighter wants you to feel off your game, but the more you have a sense of that self-respect that says, you know, I, I, I'm going to live into what I believe is a dignified way of life, that positions you to have your firmness and your uh, commitment to your own sense of integrity and goodness. And as that happens, then you're more poised to find your place of peace.